I travelled on my own to Barcelona to pick up Irene, arriving pleasantly early on the Friday evening. I dropped my bags at a friend's apartment in the central part of the old city, changed into a clean suit, and got ready to explore the area before dinner. As it was late October, the sun was much more bearable, and I decided rather rashly to walk the short stretch of the road to the beach. I had childhood memories of cheap family holidays in the UK, sitting huddled on the wet sand, shivering under a towel, waiting for the sun to come out. And the thought of Irene had made me want to connect back somehow to those awkward growing years of my youth. Those days were of course long gone, not just for me, but for Southern Europe too. I noted as I tapped my GPS position on my watch, a warning of an external temperature of 48 degrees. Standard health and safety procedures these days when leaving a building. The numbers on the temperature gauge never ever prepare you for hitting the wall of heat as you step into the outside. It's like opening your oven and walking straight in. The clear visor on my suit crackled with the blast of the heat and I paused to regulate my breathing. Momentarily, I reconsidered my plan. But I could see the sea at the end of the road and so desperately wanted to stand in front of it watching the waves. So, head down and staying carefully under the maintenance awnings, I slowly made my way down the left side of the street. I tried to emulate a nonchalant stroll, partly in case anyone was watching, and partly to persuade myself that this was actually an enjoyable evening walk. There'd been a couple of stories on the Fibber News Channel recently about members of the older generation going AWOL from their complexes and being found like baked jacket potatoes in their suits. I did not want to add to this menu option. As I slowly inched along the hundred-yard stretch of blank-walled street with its inward-facing buildings, I thought about this world that Irene was going to grow up in, so different from my childhood. This road, which 60 years ago would have been packed with students hanging out and the chatter of tourist families, was deserted, with only the occasional automated delivery vehicle whispering past. I continued my trudge to the shore, feeling increasingly uncomfortable as the condensation inside my suit made it stick to the back of my legs and the top of my forearms. I paused in a del delivery alcove to rehydrate from my water pack and tried to imagine life being lived up on the surface again. It had been a messy business back then. All the unconnected shops with their disorganised range of excess produce and the hundreds of individual cars. As I turned out of the alcove, I saw a utility drone pause at the end of the street, then turn and head up towards me. I stood still and let it Google me, flattening the cuff on my suit so that it could scan my code. It responded after a couple of seconds by flashing a green thumbs up image and word off. Good to know my vital signs were okay, I thought, even if I was increasingly hot and sweaty. I wondered if Irene would ever do this walk. She would of course be better adjusted to these temperatures, but would she be able to walk outside without a suit? That was assuming the ambient te temperatures didn't rise much further. But who know if the Twitter predictions were right. I slowly crossed the last delivery lane and stepped up onto the old pavement at the top of the beach. The sea was quite a way out and I could not smell it through my suit, but the sparkling water and surging waves were such a beautiful sight, an ample reward for the effort. I found a bit of smooth, low wall and sat down gently 
so as not to puncture my suit. Looking out to sea, I thought of my collection meeting tomorrow. I imagined picking up Irene for the first time. Would she look like me? My grandmother's DNA was a little distant, but there should be some shared hereditary features. All Irene's 40 genes had been crispered, of course, but they could give no guarantees. I listened to the distant sound of the waves through my hood and reflected on the transitions in recent years, the shift from technology upgrades to bio-augmentation, starting with drugs to make us sweat to control body temperature, then moving on to more physical enhancements. I had been too old to get the surgical adaptions, but Irene had been selected for the advanced programme. I was already proud of her. I just hoped that the grafted skin gills down her back worked to keep her cool. I wondered what grandmother would have thought. She was a feisty old stick and probably would not have accepted her as human. Hopefully, though, Irene had inherited her fighting spirit. Because perhaps by not being totally human, she will be humanity's last option for survival. I was starting to feel tired and dehydrated. So I get up slowly from the seawall and turn carefully in the sweaty suit to make my way back along the short, blistering pavement to the apartment. The heat has started to make me feel strangely dizzy. Thank you.